Welcome back to Sunday Vibes 1 and oh, we're back in the pub. The three of us are together. Patrick's returned from Paris and should we get straight into it? Let's just not muck Let's about. Go. We start with a fan question. It was sent in by Nirame Chung. Chug, can't pronounce it. He says, if you haven't already recorded Sunday Vibes, lucky for you we haven't, you have to cover the Spain manager news. It's <laughs> mental, Off says Nirame. Uh, Chris, yeah. you, you, you want to start us? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty chilly in here, mate. Um, okay, let's give you guys a bit of background on Lopetegui first and foremost, because interesting character, had a low-key playing career, and subsequently, I didn't know that much about him, so I did a bit of reading. He used to play for Real Madrid, only made one senior cap, so he does have a bit of a, an affinity with the club, um, played for Barcelona as well, but actually Basque, so he doesn't have an allegiance to either. Um, unbeaten in his first 20 games in charge of Spain. And Spain were looking more well-rounded and better prepared following that um, disastrous uh, previous World Cup, weren't they, than ever. And they'd beaten some top sides like Argentina 6-1, Italy 3-0, they'd drawn 1-1 with Germany, beat Liechtenstein 16-0 over two legs. But now the whole World Cup campaign has been thrown into disarray because Real Madrid have poached him. Mm on the cusp of the tournament. And the Spanish FA, uh, Ruby Obles, can't quite Pronounce say his name. Ruby Obles. One of those, um, probably that one, um, has, has outed him, has given him das boot because Real Madrid apparently only informed the Spanish FA five minutes before they took it to the press. Um, we'll have a little debate as to whether that was the right or wrong decision uh, later on down the line. but. Interestingly, he's not had that good a time of it at club level. So he managed at Rayo Vallecano for a bit in the second division, had a win percentage of 18%. Obviously, I can't give you much context around that, don't know what sort of state they're in. Uh, had a sort of half decent season at Porto, but didn't win any trophies and spent quite a lot of money there. In fact, I think he was given their biggest budget uh, in sort of modern times and signed the likes of Abubakar, Bruno Martins Indy, uh, Lopez and Brahimi. Uh, Brahimi probably being pick of the bunch. Um, but fared much more successfully at uh, international level in the under 19s and the under 21s. I think with the under 21s, he actually went 11 games unbeaten. He's had a win percentage of 100% with them. Won the European Championships with them. Uh, but the squad did contain the likes of Morata, Isco, mm, Thiago Alcantara. So he had a ridiculous quality of player at his disposal. So I'm not sure if that's the best reflection of how he'll do at Real Madrid, but it's certainly a gamble. They've given him a three-year contract. It's about twice the length that he's, uh, he's, he's sort of his best length that he's seen out at a club. Mm. Um, so it's definitely going to be an in interesting transition, made all the more interesting by the fact that Spanish FA have, have done this now and put Hierro in charge. Of course, Hierro, national hero, fifth top goal scorer, 89 caps to his name, I think. Uh, how do you think this will affect Spain's preparation, P to the V to the S? Um, to a certain extent, I think they know what they're doing. Like The Spanish squad's pretty organised at this point. They've been playing together forever. And um, but, but I mean, it's a fantastically stupid decision from the Spanish Federation because I can understand why they're annoyed, but there's literally no argument for, for this being an intelligent decision. It's so stupid. I mean, Rubiales, since he took over of the RFEF, which is the Spanish FA, um, has apparently been rubbing people up the wrong way, been kind of trying to show himself as like the big swinging um, And in this situation, I can understand that he's annoyed or a little bit embarrassed that, that Real Madrid have signed Lopetegui, but the squad all begged him to keep Lopetegui on just for the tournament because a lot of them know it's their last chance at winning the World Cup. And like you said, they have been in absolutely fantastic form under him. Mm. Um, they're a really organised side. They press really high. In fact, they're the second highest pressing team at the World Cup after Switzerland, interestingly enough. Um, so it just seems really short-sighted because they would still have had probably the best part of a month to look for a new manager. Now, maybe that's not as long as they want, but it's not like Spain need a manager literally as soon as the World Cup finishes. There's going to be a while after the World Cup before they actually start playing games. The only question is if they thought Lopetegui was going to be distracted, but I doubt he would be. He wants to win the World Cup as much as anyone else. He's never done that before. So Ruiales, I think, has jumped the gun and done something because he felt embarrassed. All the words that they used in their in their public statements were about 
you know, being honour bound to do it and wanting to protect the image of the Federation. And I think it's absolutely ridiculous to think that this protects the image of the Federation. To sack him on the eve of the World Cup is way more embarrassing than Real Madrid announcing that he's going to be their manager. But is it not more embarrassing Cup? him agreeing a deal the day before the World Cup starts? Like, why couldn't this conversation have just been postponed if he is their number one target? Like, I get, I, I agree uh, to most of the points you made. Um, and it didn't affect Van Gaal when he led Holland uh, at the World Cup and he had a pre, pre-contract agreement with whoever. It didn't affect Conte when he led Italy at the Euros. But I, I, I think it's a poor example to set. And I think I'm not, I don't have, you know, a knowledge of Ruby Arbles as a character. Um, but I do think that, that Spain, if, if they kind of have to safeguard what they, they've kind of accomplished over the last 20 years and being led by someone at the World Cup, the most prestigious tournament in world football, who's kind of agreed a contract behind their back, isn't, isn't it quite in, in keeping with, with this sort of, you know, the, the national team, the shirt is the most important thing. Like, I don't understand, I don't understand why it just wasn't pushed back. Why, why has, has Lopetegui felt the need to, to even, even tempt fate? Well, I think that when Madrid come calling for you as a manager, you have to say yes in that moment. In, but he's got three, to acknowledge they're in a sticky situation as well. But in three right? months time, they might have appointed someone else. He might not get that a chance again. I, I kind of agree with Pat. I think that they give him a three-year deal. I kind of agree with Pat that I think they've they, they've jumped the gun a little bit in terms of they've let their ego cloud their decision. I think it's I an emotional decision. Very emotional decision. I don't know whether that's the right thing to do on the eve of a World Cup, um, especially as we say that he would have only been there a month and would have had his eyes elsewhere. Is Hierro now the long-term option for Spain? Is that what we're saying? Like, that feels, that well, feels like a them, massive risk. Well, it gives them the option, doesn't it? You know, like they don't way, have to commit to anything. No, but either way, if he does leave after the World Cup, then why not keep Lopetegui in the first place? Uh, the thing is, I feel like we're, not, we're actually arguing different points here. Like, like what Hamill said actually isn't an argument against what I've said. I agree that I think like it's not particularly great practice from Lopetegui, but Rubiales can't, can't control when Real Madrid are going to make this announcement. And the fact that it came at the last minute, he wasn't told, is kind of not down to him. All he can control is how he deals but, with it afterwards. And he then went and made but he an can, incredibly stupid decision. He can 100% control And his the reasoning fact doesn't make sense. He should have informed the Spanish... The, the Spanish Federation whilst negotiating. No, that, no that, that's Lopetegui. I agree, I agree yeah, with yeah. that. I agree Lopetegui definitely should have let them know that he was doing this. But Rubiales given that he was told at the last minute, he then made the situation far, far worse. I don't see I how sacking why were they told at the last minute? safeguards anything. So obviously it just kind of reeks of, of political discourse, doesn't it? What, 100%. Why, why were they told, why weren't they told prior? Why wasn't, like, I, sh- I, I assume that, you know, there's quite a lot of, uh, uh, the Real Madrid have a decent relationship with the Spanish FA. Uh, so I, I, I don't understand where, where this, this, this connect has happened. But how, the- how, can it, how can it be announced? You know, how can it, they be told five minutes before it's announced? I, I, I don't get what your point is. Like, I, I, agree, I agree with you, they shouldn't have done that. But, like, I don't think that there's any particular reason. I can't really see a reason that Real Madrid would want to f*** over the Spanish but I FA. Can't, I can't see a reason why they wouldn't have told them that they're approaching it. Yeah, I agree. I'm, yeah, I'm so, very so surprised. something is happening. At club level, behind the scenes, at club level if a club like negotiates with another manager, they have to inform that club they're in, in, in negotiations with the manager. At what stage do Real Madrid not have to inform the Spanish FA they're in negotiations with their manager? I think that's crazy breakdown in communication. Yeah, no, no one disagrees that Lopetegui should have let the Spanish FA know that he was like negotiating with Real Madrid. But I don't understand what Real Madrid's incentive would be to try and like go behind the Spanish FA's back. Yeah, and like, that's where the grey area is. That's what that's what I don't understand. Yeah, I agree with that. But like, I don't really, I don't really get like. What the possible like political advantage would be of them of them not letting them know? I don't think like, there is one. I is think, it, I think my, they my, just my, weren't interested. My in only it. issue here is that Rubiales, I think, has basically made a bad situation far far worse. Like they could have spun this as in like, well, you know, Real Madrid approached him and we've agreed that he could join them after the World Cup and he's going to take control of the team for the remainder of the tournament and yeah. that's just how it's going to be and that gives them a month to look for a new manager. In fact, a little bit longer. Um, but instead, he's made a snap decision, which is. I mean, it's against the team's wishes, he's which little, I think is a pretty I, bad idea. I think idea. Lepetsky's a little bit of a snake in this situation. I have to yeah, say, no, I, no one I disagrees with that. It's not the first time he's done it either. He, he did it at Porto when he'd agreed to join Wolves, turned up in Wolverhampton, then got the, got the job uh, 
with the Spanish Federation and left there, went to Spain. So it's not the first time he's done it. He's done exactly the same thing in this situation, not inform the club, uh, not inform the national team this time and gone to a club. So I think I think he's a little bit of a snake, Lopetti. He should have informed. It's his decision yeah. to inform and the Spanish. Regardless of, of like how bashful a character Rubiales is, if if they. <laughs> You know, they had this plan, they've executed the plan well with Aragones and, uh, and, and Del Bosque and if the Spanish FA, if this newfound plan, you know, that, that saw the rejuvenation of the Spanish squad is, is propped up on, on various principles, uh, then they have to kind of, um, I mean, he could have done it in a slightly more diplomatic way, but they have to kind of strictly abide by them, don't they? Imagine the German FA doing this. It just wouldn't happen, would it? Like, and and everyone, they're the model of continuity, aren't they? They're the model of of, yeah. um, I don't know, just consistency. Uh, and can you imagine Lerv being approached like in the day before a tournament or whatever, or the week before a tournament? You no, imagine. but in the same respects, like, I wouldn't have expected Spain to. Like, to me, Spain are actually probably currently the true model of continuity. Yeah, that, and, that, and that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. uh, and that's probably why they're sticking so, they're being adhering to it so strictly. Oh, right, in terms They're of just like, it, listen, yeah. we've had success because of these principles, and now this guy who's supposed to be leading the team has gone against them in such a strong fashion that we're going to have to let him go. Yeah, we might be right. Uh, so how do we think Spain are going to do without the Petsky and with Hierro in charge now? Do we see them progressing, winning the, winning the tournament now with Piero at the helm? They're still one of the four or five best teams in it, definitely. Yeah. Uh, the question is how the squad will react to the fact that like they've just been hung out to dry. Like, I, yeah. I, If I were the squad, I'd be kind of off that like I think we had such a good chance we had a winning strategy we had a coach we trusted and mm. now we have you know you have no idea like the hope I guess is that Hierro will essentially run out Lopetegui's game plan and it'll be much the same well, but semis would still probably be I kind, what of, you'd I kind of feel like they've they've made a smart decision in appointing Hierro in that the players will have a lot of respect for him probably got friendships naturally with him it's not like an external force coming in to say you're going to play this way Hierro is just going to be appointment. yeah Hierro is just going <laughs> to kind of guide him isn't he let's have it right mm. um but I think it is fairly detrimental to the team. Like, I don't know. To me, any other side in the world this happens to, you think, F they're, they're f Spain maybe get by a little bit more because they have such a um, established way of playing mm. and such senior members of playing staff that they might be okay. But st I still think they're gonna, gonna struggle big time now that this has happened. I mean, it, it, takes the, it takes some of the heat off of all the other top sides, right? I mean, yeah. walking past billboards today you know, in Oxford Circus and there's Spain this, Spain that, and you're just thinking, we're on the cusp of a World Cup, nothing like that detrimental has been said about England in the press, apart from, you know, some disgusting <laughs> about Raheem Sterling. And Spain have just sort Taking of given every other top nation kind of a bit of, bit of leeway, haven't they? Yeah. So, I mean, cheers, Spain. Cheers, Madrid. Gracias. As well, thanks to Madrid. Is that the end of the question? Moving on? See you. New segment now then, it's quick fire questions. We've got five of them, let's rattle them off quickly. The first one comes from Finna Hoofpok. He says, who should Liverpool sign instead of Fakir? Oh, not Jordan Shakiri. it should be Felipe Anderson. Don't go to West Ham. Uh, oh God, I'm gonna go for Julian Draxler. They need somebody who can play an attacking oh, role yeah. in the in a wide area and as a striker and he's played all those positions before. Just before we did this, he said he was gonna pick Aua and I was gonna pick Draxler. But he's taken that. <laughs> next question. So, next question, you <laughs> <laughs> um, Tom Flanagan says, do you think Argentina will make it out of the group stages? Oh God, if one big nation's going to f*** it up, it's probably this Argentina yeah, side, aren't is, they? Deeply it? unbalanced, San Pauli, not overly happy with preparation, tough group. It depends what Croatia turn up, in my opinion, because they blow hot and cold too. I think they'll get out of the group, uh, but I agree, Croatia, I actually thought were mate were maybe in the two or three best teams at the Euros, so I'd love them to oh beat Argentina. God. Yeah, they'll get out of the groups. Quarterfinals, Argentina will get to for me, and then get knocked out by a better nation. Um, Hanshal Nayatial, different oh names oh this to pronounce, uh, says, is time running out for Africa to prove themselves to be a continent capable of challenging for a World Cup? Is something happening to Africa that we don't know, know about? this is a big like, answer for a quick like, question. Is it going to sink beneath the wave? This could be well, off the back of the Ghana NFA almost disbanding, right? And okay. So they, how are the African nations doing I mean, this World Cup? Uh, Ghana, the Black Stars are one of the best African sides, right? Had the, had the best pedigree, got to a quarter-final, almost made it to a, a semi, you know, thanks to the Luis Suarez handball. So I think if they, if they're sort of like them and the Ivory Coast are the barometer for, you know, African football, although I think Tunisia are the, the highest yeah, you know, they are. positioned uh, African side at the World Cup, then 
then yeah, it's going to be a long way back to 2010 levels. I think, I think talent coming out of Africa is in the best state it's ever been. Like, I think you, you've now got a few players who are going to be among the best in the world. You've already got Aubameyang, you've got Nabi Keita, Sadio Mane, Keita Balde, like all these guys. We, you didn't actually have that much world beating talent in Africa previously and now it's there, it's actually getting developed and paid attention to. All that's going to happen is more money is going to go into African football, and that's the only thing missing. The talent is there. This yeah. time for Africa. Um, right, okay, next um, one was sent in by Jane Lundgren. Who's going to win the Golden Boot? Oh, <laughs> God. There's a lot of names, isn't there? Depends what sort of Thomas Muller turns up, because <coughs> he, he tends to score five or zero, doesn't hit these international tournaments. I've previously uh, said Gabriel Jesus and Timo Werner, so I think one of them for me. Oh, maybe, okay. maybe. Maybe Gabriel Jesus, although I think on FFR it's a Timo Werner. Yeah, not the, the, sure. My only worry about Jesus is I think sometimes Firmino's going to play and that's going to cut down his minutes Ooh, on the field. But otherwise my instinct point. would absolutely be Gabby Jesus. I mean, my instinct, more, more obvious than yours potentially, is saying Neymar is going to be the top goal scorer. I think he might win the golden ball, best player. Yeah. yeah. I think he might win I the best Brazil, actually, Brazil potential favourites, but uh, if it's not Neymar, I'll go either Harry Kane or Timo Werner. Interesting. Don't write off Harry Kane. If Harry Kane starts well, that group could get a pummel Panama could get <laughs> whacked by Harry Kane. Seriously. <laughs> um, the next and final uh, quick fire question was sent in by Ashwin Kumar. He says, do you think Pogba is utilised in the right way by the Champs and Jose? I've oh, got that, mate. You do this one. Uh, absolutely not. Obviously not. Uh, get him further forward, Jose, and get a third midfielder in there. He did it for about a tenth of the season last year, so try it. For sake. <laughs> I mean, Tolisso coming into the French setup will help yeah. Pogba. I think Kante, Tolisso, and Pogba is actually a really oh, perfectly sick. balanced midfield three. So hopefully that will give Pogba the freedom yeah. he doesn't have when Matuidi plays. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is what the Champs didn't have at the last Euros, right? And that's yeah. why Pogba yeah. is playing as like a pivot. Um, so I think if he carries on with that 4 3 3 that he set up against Italy with pre tournament when they won 3 1, then that would be better for Pogba. Um, but yes, they only got 18, 19 goals out of France, didn't he? So not convinced by the champs. Not convinced by Jose. Not overly convinced by Pogba at times either, but that's the nature. It'd be of nice football. if we never had to answer this question about Pogba though. Wouldn't it be great if he had a good season? Fingers so crossed. we don't have to be asked whether he's being used the right way. <laughs> Shut the f up. So that's quick fire questions. Let us know what you thought of that new segment. Uh, put it in the comments below if you enjoyed it. Yes or no, whatever. We're going to finish on this every single week, so be involved on Twitter next time around. It's a non-football related question. This one was sent in by Caleb Saunders. He says, what is your favourite sports movie of all time? Ooh, so it can't be a football movie. So does it have to be, can it oh, be fictional? Fine. Is it non-fictional? Uh, I think either. It can be a documentary, I yeah. guess. Well, I would have said Next Goal Wins if it was just favourite sport movie. Which one's uh, that? Which was about the, is, it, the my, is it one of the micro... Polynesian islands yeah. where the Dutch coach takes oh, over yeah. and there's that transgender player. Great film, but he said non, non -football. football related. There's American football count. No, you can use American you football. Use American. Uh, so, yeah, any, any given Sunday. I mean, never seen it. A sucker for the. You'd love it. Uh, a, a dramatic speech and that big cr emotional crescendo. Love it. Al Pacino as well. What a don. Never seen it. That's or it. Uh, Remember the Titans. I remember the Titans. Um, oh my god, I, I, there are like two or three, it's really difficult cool. to decide. I mean, Hoop Dreams is the best sports documentary ever made about like two kids trying to become basketball stars. It's like three hours long and every minute of it is incredible. Like these kids just struggling to become basketball players and all about their families. Um, I think uh, Bull Durham, which is about baseball. Like I hate baseball. Baseball looks amazing on film. It's an incredibly like cinematic sport. Moneyball was fucking great. As yeah, well. Moneyball's yeah, good. Moneyball's like good. and and Bull Durham like has an incredible performance from Susan Sarandon. Tim Robbins is great in it. Kevin Costner's great in it. Um, White Men Can't Jump, another great basketball movie. Um, oh my God, there are so many, man. And I feel like there's another one I'm forgetting, but. I don't know. Time. That's, pro that's probably, that's right. probably enough. Struggling a bit. Maybe maybe one of the Rockies. Yeah. yeah, that's not man. boxing is really good on, on, on screen, Rockies. isn't it? Uh, what was the what was the re, what was the new release? The Rocky spin-off recently? Uh, Creed. Apollo. Creed. 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 Creed.
The mean uh, machine. The mean machine. machine. That's got to be counted in there. Does Jerry Maguire count? Jerry Maguire <laughs> yeah, is Jerry an incredible Maguire. movie. Jerry I Maguire's love Jerry Maguire. Maguire. I just like the English mean machine for, for Statham's role. And he died. The monk. Yeah. Slap, <laughs> slap <laughs> shot. I bet you, I bet you love Goon, don't that. you? Uh, no, Goon is a horrible film. Slap shot is good. That's a really good ice hockey Do you know actually has surprisingly good taste in films? Didn't like it. No, it doesn't. I do. Absolutely. You do dear. not. You're dreadful. But uh, what's your favourite sports movie? Let us know in the comments below. Should we just wrap it up there? Yeah, straight yeah to the that was good. Because what else is happening on the Football Daily Network this weekend? All right, we've got Euro on Euro Football Daily. We've got Stat Wars, the Ooh. champions. It's Dave Horner versus Sport. Jackson, not this, Horner. Dave Horner. Dave Horner's on balls up. Go and watch that as well. Dave Jackson on uh, Stat Wars champions against Sport. Like I said, for a place in the semi-finals. Yes. Ooh, business end of the season. Oof. What else? Uh, keep tuned for all our great World Cup content. I think Chris Hamill's going to be doing a watch along for the first England game. Ooh. I think I'm in a pub for that somewhere with some Tunisians. You are. I don't know what Tunisian pub we managed to find, but it can only be great. <laughs> so uh, that's the end of the Vibes. Wow. Bye. <laughs>